Good day and welcome to this presentation on business combinations and at acquisition consolidations. In this presentation, we are going to deal with the different types of investments that a company may have, as well as then focus on investments where a company has control over another company. We have two main types of investments that could occur when a company invests in another company. The first one being a simple share investment. Now this occurs when an investing company has no influence or control over the company they are investing in. These investments are accounted for in terms of IFRS 9 and are known as equity investments. These investments are accounted for at fair value, which could be at fair value through profit or loss, or when the shares are not held for trading and the company has the option to ir irrevocably elect to account for these investments at fair value through OCI. The next main type of investment is referred to as a significant share investment, which occurs when an investing company has significant influence or control over the affairs of the entity. These types of investments are accounted for based on the influence or the control that is held by the investing entity, in other words, the investor. So if we have a look at our significant share investments, we have three main categories that fall under a significant share investment. The first one is where a company has control over another company. And the company that is being controlled would be referred to as a subsidiary. So you have a parent subsidiary relationship, and this is accounted for by consolidating the financial statements. The next one is where you have a situation of joint control, and this could be either in the form of a joint venture, which is accounted for in the equity method, or a joint operation, which is accounted for in terms of the applicable IFRA standards when it comes to the assets, liabilities, revenue, or expenditure. And then the last one is significant influence. So this is where a company has significant influence over another company, and the company would be referred to as an associate, and it would also be accounted for on the equity method. Now for the next few presentations, we are only going to focus on control, what is control? What is a subsidiary or parent? Who's a parent? Who's a subsidiary? As well as have a look at how to consolidate financial statements. An investment in which one entity controls another entity is referred to as a business combination. Now, according to IFRS 3, when we have a business combination, we need to consolidate our financial statements. So let's take a few steps back and look at what is a business combination. A business combination is a transaction or any other event in which an acquirer obtains control of one or more businesses. A business is referred to as a set of activities and assets that are capable of being conducted and managed for the purpose of providing a return. This can be in the form of dividends, lower costs, or any other economic benefits. Now, when you have a business combination, you will have a parent or subsidiary relationship. So let's take a closer look at the parent or subsidiary relationship that exists due to a business combination. Let's assume we have an entity who we will refer to as P Limited. P Limited has purchased the majority of shares in S Limited and as a result has gained control over S Limited. Both of these companies are legal entities on their own. Therefore, S Limited is a business that P Limited has gained control over and therefore we have a business combination. P Limited is referred to as the parent or the investor or even the acquirer. And this is the company who has control over the other company. S Limited will be the subsidiary or the investee or the acquiree being the company who is controlled by the parent. 
These two companies are referred to as a group as they are related to one another. Remember, P Limited controls S Limited. And when we refer to both companies as a group, we refer to them as the P Limited group. Therefore, the P Limited group means that it is P Limited and S Limited combined. So let's take a closer look at control. An investor controls the investee when the following three requirements have been met. The investor has power over the investee. Now this occurs when the investor has existing rights that give it the current ability to direct the relevant activities of the investee. For example, the investor has the ability to direct activities that significantly affect the investee's returns. The second one is the exposure or right to variable returns from its involvement with the investee. Therefore, the investor's returns from the involvement with the investee could vary due to the investee's performance. And the last one is the investor has the ability to use its power to affect the amount of returns it is exposed to. So therefore, the investor not only has the power and the right to variable returns, but also has the ability to use its power to affect the returns from its involvement with the investee. So now that we've dealt with control, let's have a look at an example to see if we're able to determine whether a company has control over another company or not. P Limited owns 60% of the shares in S Limited. P Limited has one vote at the annual general meeting, the AGM, for every share held in S Limited. At the AGM, decisions are made that direct the relevant activities of S Limited, which include the dividend policy or payouts, the operating business decisions, and so forth. P Limited has rights to variable returns in the form of dividends, as well as the value of the investment in shares of S Limited. So does P Limited have control over S Limited? Now let's look at the three requirements for an investor to have control. The first one is, does the investor have power over the investee? We know that P Limited owns 60% of the shares in S Limited and therefore has majority voting rights at the AGM where the decisions are made that direct the relevant activities of S Limited. Therefore, P Limited has power over S Limited, but take note that the power is based on P Limited having majority votes at the AGM and not necessarily based on how many shares P Limited owns. For example, if P Limited only owned 40% of the shares but held a majority voting right at the directors meeting, maybe due to the number of directors they were allowed to appoint or remove, P Limited would have power as the entity would still have a majority voting right. Next, we look at does the investor have the right to variable returns? Now, as P Limited has a right to dividends, as well as the value of the investment in shares of S Limited, we know that P Limited does have a right to variable returns. The last one is the investor, does the investor have the ability to use its power to affect the amount of return it is exposed to? So we know that P Limited has a majority voting right at the AGM, where the decisions are made that direct the relevant activities that also affect the returns. For example, the dividend policy and the dividend payouts of, list of S Limited. And therefore, P Limited does have the ability to affect the returns. And this requirement has therefore been met. And we know that P Limited does control S Limited, and therefore S Limited will be a subsidiary of P Limited. 
So as we now know already, the transactional event that gives the acquirer the parent control of one or more businesses is referred to as a business combination. And when we have a business combination, FS3 states that the financial statements must be consolidated. If we refer back to our example of P and S Limited, P Limited and S Limited are both legal entities. So each entity will prepare its own set of separate financial statements. However, the parent within the group, being P Limited, is required to present consolidated financial statements in which the financial statements are consolidated, in other words, added together with those of their subsidiaries. Therefore, combining the financial statements of P Limited and S Limited to get consolidated financial statements, which will be the financial statements of the P Limited group. Now, there are exceptions to when a company or the parent needs to consolidate. And the exceptions include when the parent is a subsidiary of another company or entity, the parent's debt or equity is not traded in the public market, the parent did not file nor is in the process of filing financial statements with the Securities Commission, and the ultimate or intermediate parent of the parent produces consolidated financial statements. So only in these four scenarios will P Limited not be required to prepare consolidated financial statements. In our next presentation, we will focus on identifying and measuring the consideration transferred, as well as how to recognize and measure the identifiable assets acquired and the liabilities assumed. Thank you for watching. Bye.